countries and governments insist that you be treated humanely, despite you all being criminal filth. So for an hour a day, you will be allowed out of your cells to enjoy a variety of activities, such as poker, the pontoon, the gym rummy, snap, please be seated. Now, Her Majesty's government is also keen that you be rehabilitated. So you will spend this hour in the company of the prison psychologist. This is in an effort to get to the bottom of why you're all such terrible human beings. An hour for recreation and an hour with the psychologist? And it's the same hour, huh? <laughs> yes, well, Her Majesty's government is particularly keen on budget cuts. Whatever. When's the psychologist get here? Ah, but he already is here. I shall be your psychologist. Well, you're the warden, you know. Take a look around you. Does this look like a particularly well-founded operation? I've been in better furnished chemical toilets. Now I assure you, there is not a prison in the land that has run to a higher standard than this one. Now, according to my four-hour audio course, our first step should be to establish a mutually supportive group dynamic. You should get to know one another, so you feel comfortable discussing the guilt you feel for committing your criminal acts. Then we should play poker. Play poker with a guy who bombed faster than Miss Whiplash in a top full of super glue. Capital. <laughs> now, as you are new prisoners here at HMP Brompton Vale, you should introduce yourselves to one another. I will begin. My name is Sir Reginald Fazak. I'm the 18th Lord of Bromptonshire, and you may call me Sir Fazak. Yes, sir. And you're the Lord. And you're the Prison Warden. Look, this isn't about me. I'm trying to help you become a better person, you odious little scumbot. Sorry, I'm so just... So just shut up and tell everyone your name so we can begin <laughs> healing. Right, right. Hi, my name's High Karate. I'm an expert in karate, and my hobbies include karate. What a complex man you are. <laughs> I also like Scrabble. Well, hush my mind. <laughs> so we got a couple of here. You snap a man in two like some piece of antique mahogany. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I did, but, but that's not why. Ah, it's complicated. Then tell us about it. If we have to waste a whole hour here, it might as well be interesting and violent. <laughs> <laughs> Think that would help us? How should I know? Um, that is to say, yes, please share high karate. Okay, well, I guess it's starting on just a typical day. My favourite way of unwinding after a heavy morning spent breaking bricks with my hands, feet and teeth is to play a rousing game of Scrabble with my mates John and Mike. At least they used to be. John and Mike weren't karate experts, not like me. Sure they dabbled, but between them they could barely dink gravel. Still, we were old friends and we always had board games to keep us together. On this particular day, Mike had to leave the game early. Murder She Wrote was coming on the telly and he was really, really into Angela Lansbury. We never asked him about that because we were scared he might tell us. With Mike gone, our game intensified. We'd always been good players, but this was a new level of skill for both of us. We'd been playing for hours, not thinking about food or rest, and the scores were level when John decided to cheat. I mean, omnibus? I knew that wasn't a word, and he knew it too, but John went back down. The stakes have gone too high. What else could I do? I had protected my honour as a black belt scrabbler, but John had left me one last problem. His body. I tried everything I could think of to hide him, but it was so difficult. Karate trains you to fight, not to tidy up.
Eventually, I managed to hide John on the number 22. No one noticed he was dead. I guess he must have looked as happy as everyone else on the morning commute. But I'd done it. I was in the clear. My pal was dead. But you have to learn to deal with these things as a karate master. That's when it all went wrong. Mike had been found dead, poisoned by a pizza that I had paid for. Are you telling me you've been falsely imprisoned? You've just admitted that you killed your friend! The police arrested me for poisoning Mike, and then poison Mike. Who poisons a pizza? That would be dishonourable. Stabbing a man on account of his vocabulary? That's gentlemanly conduct, is it? No need to get upset, So, sir, Lord Warden, to begin the therapy, how are you going to help this poor little man come to terms with his unconscionable actions? Button your lip, you contentable turd! <laughs> you! You feel remorse for poisoning that fellow! No, I didn't poison him. Oh, yes, yes, you did say. Um, <laughs> well, well, the other chap, do you feel remorse for him? Um, not really, but well, that's not why I'm here. Yes, yes, quite the stab, Johnny. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh well, I've done everything I can for you. Enjoy your next 25 years in jail. Next! Oh, come on! You see how high karate heels reap the benefits of talking it through? He's a changed man. You! Wop! Take your turn! You mean the me? No, I mean the wop beside you. Yes, you. You don't want to hear my tale. It is a tragedy of squandered talent and the battles that rage within the souls of madmen. Well, excellent. Let's be having you. You disgusting boyer. You really want to peace upon the bitter ashes of my ruined life? <laughs> <laughs> that, sir, is my job. Your job is to make sure our slot buckets don't overflow. Yes, well, such varied work is the joy of my profession. Your story, damn your eyes. Very well. 